Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Mind Map. Today's topic of discussion is atmospheric pressure and motions. First of all, we will discuss about atmospheric pressure, pressure type and pressure gradient, variations in atmospheric pressure, pressure belts or horizontal pressure distribution, air circulation, Coriolis force or effect and factors affecting wind velocity and direction. First of all, let's discuss about atmospheric pressure. The weight of a column of air contained in a unit area from the mean sea level to the top of the atmosphere is called the atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric pressure is expressed in units of millibar. At sea level, the average atmospheric pressure is 1013.2 millibar. Due to gravity, the air at the surface is denser and hence has higher pressure. Pressure is measured with the help of a mercury barometer or the aneroid barometer. The pressure decreases with height. At any elevation, it varies from place to place and its variation is the primary cause of air motion that is wind. Wind blows from high pressure areas to low pressure areas. Now let's discuss about pressure type and pressure gradient. Air pressure is generally divided into two types. These are indicated by shapes of isobars. High pressure High pressure systems are characterized by highest air pressure in the center of almost closed isobars. Pressure decreases from the center outward and the lowest pressure is found at the outer margin of the high pressure system. The high pressure in the center is called high and is displayed by H on the weather maps. The system is also called as anticyclone. Low pressure. Low pressure systems are also called low or simply L or cyclones or depressions. These are centers of low pressure having increasing pressures outward. It has closed air circulation from outside towards the central low pressure. The air blows inward in anticlockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. Pressure gradient. It is defined as decrease of pressure between isobars of different values, that is from high pressure to low pressure. It may be mentioned that high and low pressures are always used in relative terms and not in absolute terms. More precisely, air pressure gradient refers to the rate of change of pressure per unit, horizontal distance between two points. Now let's have a look at variations in atmospheric pressure. Daily variation of air pressure is controlled by heating or cooling of the ground surface. Ground surface is heated by solar radiation called Insulational heating and cooled by outgoing terrestrial radiation called radiational cooling. Seasonal pressure variations are related to changes in pressures during summer and winter seasons. Seasonal pressure variation is also called annual pressure variation. The equatorial zone displays smallest seasonal variation in the pressures. It is because the amount of insulation received at the ground surface remains almost constant throughout the year. The tropical and subtropical areas record largest seasonal variation of atmospheric pressure due to extreme weather conditions. Vertical pressure variation denotes decrease of air pressure with increasing altitude because of decrease in air density with increase in height from sea level. The ascending air expands aloft and becomes less dense resulting in the decrease of air pressure. Now let's discuss about pressure belts or horizontal pressure distribution. The globe is considered to be homogeneous either of land or water, then here should be regular and systematic zonal distribution of high and low pressure. But the regularity of pressure belts is distributed due to unequal distribution of land and water on the globe. Major pressure belts are equatorial low pressure belt. It is located on either side of the geographical equator in a zone extending between 5 degree north and 5 degree south latitudes. This zone is not stationary because there is seasonal shift of this belt with the northward, summer solstice and southward, winter solstice migration of the sun. Because of frequent calm conditions, this belt is called a belt of calm or doldrums. Subtropical high pressure belt extends between the latitudes of 25 degree to 35 degree in both the hemisphere. The zone of high pressure is called horse latitude because of prevalence of frequent calms. In ancient times, the merchants carrying horses in their ships had to throw out some of the horses while passing through this zone of calm in order to lighten their ships. This is why the zone is called horse latitude. Subpolar low pressure belt 
It is located between 60 degree to 65 degree latitudes in both the hemispheres. The subpolar low pressure belt is more developed and regular in the southern hemisphere because of dominance of water. It is broken in northern hemisphere and instead of pressure belt there are well defined pressure centers. Polar high pressure belt, high pressure persists at the poles throughout the year because of the presence of very low temperature. Pressure is inversely related to temperature. The differences in pressure are the result of differences in the heating and cooling of land and water surfaces. Low temperature generates high pressure and high temperature gives birth to low pressure. As per rule, air moves down the pressure gradient from high pressure to low pressure. The rate of air movement, that is wind speed, depends on the steepness of gradient. The steeper the pressure gradient, the higher the rate of air movement, wind speed, and lower the pressure gradient, the slower the wind speed. The wind direction is also dependent on the direction of pressure gradient. As per rule, the direction of air movement should be perpendicular to the isobars because of direction of pressure gradient. But the direction is deviated from the expected theoretical direction due to Coriolis force caused by the rotational movement of the earth. Now let's discuss about Coriolis force or effect. The force which deflects the direction of winds is called deflection force, also called Coriolis force. Because of Coriolis force, all the winds are deflected to the right in the northern hemisphere, while they are deflected to the left in the southern hemisphere with respect to the rotating earth. Features of Coriolis force are, it is not in itself a force but the effect of rotational movement of the earth. Coriolis force becomes effective on any object which is in motion, example wind, aircrafts, missiles, etc. It affects wind direction, it does not affect the wind speed. Magnitude of the Coriolis force depend on wind speed, higher the wind speed, more the deflection. It becomes maximum at the poles due to minimum rotational speed of the earth, while it becomes zero at the equator. It always acts at right angles to the horizontally moving air and other moving objects. Now lastly, let's discuss about factors affecting wind velocity and direction. Pressure gradient force. The difference in atmospheric pressures produces a force. The pressure gradient is strong where the isobars are close to each other and is weak where the isobars are apart. Frictional force. It affects the speed of the wind. It is greatest at the surface and its influence generally extends up to an elevation of 1 to 3 km. Over the sea surface, the friction is minimal. Coriolis force. The rotation of the earth about its axis affects the direction of the wind. This force is called the Coriolis force after the French physicist Gigi Coriolis who described it in 1844. Now it's time for the practice question. First of all, prelims question. What causes wind to deflect toward left in southern hemisphere? Temperature, magnetic field, rotation of the earth or pressure? You can send the answer of this question in the comment section. And now mains question. What are the factors affecting wind velocity and direction? Explain the Coriolis effect on winds. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.